All right, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, what was the name, department, and level? Okay, I am Ifan Yusopolichuku, a 500 level medical student in wow. the University of Nigeria, Asuka. Wow, University of Nigeria, 500 level student. So let me ask first, why did you decide to study medicine and surgery? Well, I've always had the passion since I was quite young. I know it's a cliche now. I want to, what do you want to be? I want mm. to be a doctor. I want to be. But that is a cliche doesn't mean it's, it's incorrect. Okay. I've always had the passion when okay. I was quite young. My dad is a doctor, so wow. it all felt natural. Okay, okay. So uh, what, what did you get as your jam score when you applied for medicine and surgery? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm a change of course um, okay, 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 student, okay. so my jump score was around 280. Okay, okay, okay. So that was after I was in med lab, then I switched over to okay, medicine okay. and surgery. So that already tells us that it's even possible, probably you are in anatomy, you are in microbiology, you can still switch to medicine and surgery at the end of the day. Yes, it's very, very possible. I mean, it's very common now. People do it, mostly. Uh, the next question is, how many years is medicine and surgery in university? Uh, that is a funny question to ask now because with all the strikes and all the one thing or the other, it's, mm. you might end up spending more than. But the idea here is actually six years. Six it's years. a six year course. Okay. Yes. So, can you give us like a kind of breakdown? What do you actually do from your first year? I think there's something about second MBBS, third MBBS. Yeah, yeah. In first year, you are in Osuka for us that are here in University of Nigeria, Osuka. Okay. In first year, you spend it in Osuka doing basically higher levels of chemistry, biology, and just getting used to those kind of courses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then after first year, you are now crossing over to Enugu here, yeah. Enugu campus, where you now start getting introduced to courses like anatomy, biochemistry, physiology. Mm. Then that's when they now talk. The main courses you are preparing for in your second MB is your anatomy, biochemistry, and physiology. Okay. And is in second year. That is in the second year, that is when you prepare for that. And you take your second MBBS exam in your okay. third year in medical school. Okay, okay. So how was our second MBBS? How was the preparation for you? Well, I had my own stories. It's, it's difficult, but it's easy to say. Okay, if okay. What I did, actually, sometimes I wake up in the morning, 8 o'clock, I'm in the library. From that, it no, normally I will bath and do all those things, but 8 a.m., mm. I'm already in the library. Yeah. Then from that 8 a.m. till 2, we go and have lunch. Mm. After the lunch, you get back to the library. After that, you read till 5. This is what, we ha it happened over a period of three months. Mm. Three months back to back to back, because you know I'm a change of course student yeah, yeah, and yeah, I had to, to, cover to cover that kind of thing. So I needed to cover backlog of, backlog of um, yeah, yeah, academic, materials. Yes, materials. So, I really read. Then also in the night, because mm. any day you miss and you didn't read, you pay for it. So that is how it is in this university. Okay. So the, the fear of failure and everything will ginger you. Yeah, After pressure. all the things you have suffered, all the jam scores, all the change of course, because it's not just, not anybody can just go and change of change course or do anything yeah, yeah, like that. You have to pay some money for it. Okay. So after everything, you now say the person fail. No, no, it's not <laughs> good. You think of all these things and that is what will give you the ginger yeah, to yeah, continue. Motivation. Yeah. Okay. So usually when we talk about medicine and surgery, it's usually like those that are intelligent from secondary school. You understand? Like the best students usually go for medicine and surgery, they go for law, they go for engineering. So my question now is, let's say for an average student that did not get the opportunity of going to the best secondary schools, you know, doesn't really have the, the best foundation, but then the person eventually gets into the College of Medicine. Is it possible for that person to excel academically here at the College of Medicine? Well, it depends on you in particular. There is no template on who will succeed or not. It's if you decide to succeed, that is when you actually succeed. Okay. Success is a personal decision. Okay. To me, anybody can do medicine. Okay. Uh, except maybe you have a mental disorder or something like that. Okay. Anybody can do it. It just depends on the person. Okay. So uh, now that you're in 500 level, can you describe like what your typical day looks like as a medical student? Well, I'm currently doing, I mean, concluding my uh, first block pediatric posting. And it has been quite draining. Mm. Every day we wake up early by eight. You are inside the bus. The bus will carry you from old UNTH mm. to this um, uh, Itukuazala. So after that, we meet with the consultants. On Tuesdays, we normally have our clinics. Mm. 
So it will be a busy day. So we keep seeing patients like that. Then after that, on Wednesday is our ward round. We go to the ward, we see patients, we talk with consultants. Mm -hmm. Consultants also palpate students. You see, um, I can't remember his name now, but he really... Make sure that, like you know. he shows us everything that happens in this hospital. If you watch his video, I can't remember his name now, but that is basically what we do. Okay. On Wednesdays, we have our ward round. On Thursdays, like this, we also have ward round, registrar's ward round. Then on Fridays, consultant's ward round. But it has been hell. Okay, I try. Okay, okay. So, enjoying. wow, that is, that is nice. That is nice. So, in second year, you. In third year, you sit for your second MBBS, right? Yes, yes, yes. So after that, what do you now do? What exam do you write now? Like, do you attend lectures or you go for clinical postings? Well, how we do it here, it might change in the future. After the second MB, you start your clinical postings. Okay. That is your M1, S1 posting. After the M1, S1 posting, you now do... Okay, no, you actually do... There's a way they do it. Sometimes they do the posting before the block lectures. Okay. Then sometimes they do the block lectures before the posting. So it's okay. so it just, it just depends on probably the school. Yeah, yeah every university is out there. But you side. surely do your okay. block lectures and your postings. So what level do you sit for your third MBBS exam? That is in your 400 level. The 400 level. The 40. Okay. Is there any other MBBS exam you still sit for again? Of course, you sit for your uh, fourth MBBS and then the final at what, one. At which what is, level? That is in your fifth year. Yeah, then you now sit for the final one. One, which is on the yeah, final, final year, year, 60. Oh, okay, okay. So let me ask, as a medical student, is it based on your experience and your interactions with your classmates, mm. is it possible to, like, let's say, combine a side also, let me maybe, maybe do something by the side, you know, to make money for yourself while you're still in school? Or the course is so demanding that you don't have any time for, let's say, extracurricular activities or anything like that? Well, this question is actually a good question because me, I'm in between that deciding yeah. exactly. I'm kind of trying to decide whether it's even possible. Okay. But actually, most of my classmates, they actually combine different things. Okay. They, you see them coming to posting, but then they are doing one. I know one of my classmates, he's a very huge forex trader. He oh, does wow. that. I know one that is into video, videography. Yes. I know one that is into selling um, all these uh, scrubs and everything. So it just depends on the person, mm -hmm. per se. It will not... I mean, not everybody here will now end up being doctors in yeah, the future. Right. So it's just your passion. What's and Nigeria now? You must be doing something to actually yeah, just to supplement the whole okay, economy. Okay. All right. Thank you it's very. Possible. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, uh, what advice would you have or say to a student that is aspiring to study medicine and surgery at any university in Nigeria? Well, my advice to my fellow students because all of us are students in this um, department mm. is just keep your mind open and whatever you are doing try to involve God also okay. and also don't be restrictive with your learning don't just take whatever they give you in the whatever you learn from no matter how big the person is try to critique it with your own mind okay. try to like maybe you learned something new today. Go back and check whatever that thing is. Try to do know whether, research, yes, yeah. do further research about it because the period and process of doing that research, you now find uh, yourself understanding the topic more. Better, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. And don't just use only materials to prepare for exams. Okay. And you also try to read vastly and widely. Mm -hmm. It's going to help in your understanding and also in practice in general. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, uh, lastly, let me ask, has there been any challenging experience like this or academics so far you want to share with us? Well, uh, I've not had any, well, I call it repeat or receipt kind okay, of exam. But Greece. I know... Most of my friends, the joy is not always complete. Mm. One of them or two of them will have issues. But then, it's normal in this department. I've not had, doesn't mean I will not have. I'm not praying to have, but yes. it doesn't, that is not the end of the whole thing. At least you learn from it. Mm. It's actually good to some extent if you have receipt in an exam because oh. it tends to give you more understanding of that particular topic that you failed or mm. course that you failed. So, when somebody has a repeat or a receipt in any course at all. It should not 
take that cause the person out. cause the person to feel so depressed or anything just learn from your failures and move on Pick yourself up yes all right thank you very much it has been nice talking to you and uh, we wish you success in your academics and future endeavors no uh, thank you very much